Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day's going really well. I'm in Luminar 4 today and uh, I get questions from time to time about which uh, which f uh, filters slash tools in Luminar do I use the most or which ones are my favorite or what's my go-to kind of uh, group of filters. And so, you know, that's like telling someone to pick their favorite child. You're like, you love all your children, uh, but the truth is you have some favorites, right? So. Um, I have, uh, I've narrowed it down to 10. Um, they're probably my favorite. I don't know if favorite's the right word or if they're my go-to or if they're my most frequently used, but these are the 10 filters, tools, uh, filters or tools uh, that I tend to use the most, that I find myself in Luminar most often uh, addressing and, and applying to images. So without further ado, I wanted to hop into that and let's get started. And by the way, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. I've got a lot more Luminar 4 videos planned as well as a number of other things. I've got a bunch of deep dives, more workflow, just a lot of stuff coming. So please do subscribe. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Tell YouTube that you like what I'm doing and um, just keep tuning back. More coming. So here we go. This photo, uh, just something I shot in London. I'm going to just jump into this, uh, these 10 filters slash tools. I know they're called tools, but I just still call them filters. Those two uh, terms are interchangeable in this video because I'm going to use them both, I'm sure. To be clear, I'm not going to deep dive into every single one of these and each component of them and how I use them and how they work because that would make the video really long. So I'm just going to hit the highlights. I'm going to start with light. Incredibly powerful. It is basically what was known as raw develop in the previous version. And it just has so many fabulous things. In this case, I think I would take the exposure up which is not something I'm often doing on a photo. I'd probably bring up the shadows a little bit and maybe even take the temperature a little bit cooler. Um, the other great thing about it is uh, smart contrast. I did a video about that here. Uh, it's really intelligent and helping you sort of create the contrast in the right areas. And don't even get me started on the advanced settings. Whites and blacks come in handy, but wow, the tone curve. I need to come back and do a deep dive on that. I keep saying that. I'm going to do it. Hold me to it, okay? Hold me to it. By the way, if there are other deep dives you want to see, please leave a comment down below and let me know. But that is light. That is the first tool that I recommend as uh, or use as one of my go-tos. And if you look at it, I mean, very quickly, it went from that to that, which is basically an edited photo. I'm kind of done. So that's the power of light. And that's why it's number one on my go-to list. Okay, number two is AI Enhance. And it's primarily because of AI Accent, which is, you know, it's effectively the easy button. It does a lot of things. It does impact, uh, it, you know, I, I, I try to break this down when I look at a photo and what it does. Obviously, it impacts the exposure like an intelligent way, much like Smart Tone used to work in the uh, previous version. I still want Smart Tone back. Um, but it's also, uh, it does some contrast kind of stuff. It does pop the colors. Um, the thing it doesn't do is like a temperature type control, right? So the before, and the after in this case i think you need to go back and use light and take the temperature a little bit to the left to cool that off a little bit that's my preference for how um you know what i would do in this case but ai enhance incredibly powerful really good at helping you quickly get uh, a photo from kind of like eh, not really sure i like this to hey i got a photo here sky enhancer not going to work on this photo because there's no sky but incredibly powerful as well and i use it probably about 30 to 40% of the time when I'm using AI Accent, I'll also use AI Sky Enhancer. Super powerful uh, tool combination here. That's why AI Enhance is number two on my list. Now I'm gonna go ahead and leave AI Enhance on simply because it brightens the photo and I'm gonna get into number three, which is AI Structure. I talk about this one all the time. It's really powerful. I love to drag things to the right, especially a scene like this. I mean, this is a graffiti alley in London, it just screams, you know, hey Jim, just crank up the detail. And that AI structure, dragging the amount plus the boost is just really fabulous. And if you notice, it also made the photo a bit brighter, right? There's the before and there's the after. So it pops the detail, brightens the photo a little bit and the color is really looking good. So I love this. And of course, you've seen me do this in, in previous videos and that is to take the structure and go negative. So again, not the best photo example for this, but um, going negative allows you to soften detail as you can see here. And then, you know, if you wanna boost it and make it super soft, you can create some artistic effects. And what I generally like to do here is use AI structure negative on sky and water just to smooth it out, soften it up, 
add a little bit of that dreamy uh, kind of long exposure look. It's just a personal preference, but that's one of the reasons I like AI structure so much because it's actually it's more versatile. You hear structure and you think, drag it to the right and get crunchy, and it does that. The drag it to the left, gets soft and dreamy, does that just as well. And in this case, you could say edit mask, come in here and do like a radial mask around this guy, keep it crisp there. I'll just do this while we're talking. Keep it crisp there, uh, something like that. Uh, and then adjust your radial mask, you know, da da da. Anyway, crisp details around the center of the photo, which is the subject, which is this guy, and then soft everywhere else. It's just an idea. You have lots of flexibility, but another reason why AI structure is number three on my list. Okay, I'm gonna leave AI Enhance on again simply because it brightens the photo. And number four is color. And, you know, I like it for two reasons. That was three. Two reasons. The first one is, of course, saturation. Um, I like the saturation and vibrant, both of these sliders. I use saturation sparingly. I use vibrance more heavily, right? And I've talked about this before, but saturation, it's going to jack up all the colors, right? And I don't always want that. I tend to want some of the non-dominant colors to get a little bit more kick, if you will. And vibrance comes in really uh, well in terms of helping do that. So if I use them in tandem, it would be a little bit sparingly on saturation and a little bit heavily on vibrance and so I like that a whole lot but the second reason I like this so much is these advanced settings down here because I'm looking at this and let's say I do bump up the vibrance quite a bit and maybe give the saturation a little kick I'm starting to get really heavily colored there I might want to come into this yellow take that saturation down uh, and maybe do the same on this orange just to kind of tame some of that stuff in the center and now it's a little bit tamer in the center here but all these other surrounding colors are still kind of popping. And so looks like that are, are fun to experiment and having these separate color channels gives you a whole lot of power and flexibility, not to mention the fact that you can play with hues, uh, you know, luminance as well and all that kind of stuff. So lots of power and color. That's why it's number four on my list. Okay, and number five is vignette. I just adore vignette. I've got a thing with vignettes. I don't know what it is, but I like to put vignettes. This is a great example of a photo where you could use a vignette. So I might say amount and size, you make it kind of tighter, and then choose your subject, come over here, click on that guy, and you can see how the vignette uh, center has been placed over here. So it's giving you, um, it looks like a spotlight effect, which is basically what a vignette is especially when you come down here into the advanced settings and use inner light, just drag that to the right, kind of pop the center of that. You might want to apply, uh, play with the size and the amount, depending on what kind of look you're going for. But vignette, I mean, the whole point of vignette is to draw your attention to a certain part of the photo. And that's often what I'm doing because um, I shoot a lot of cityscapes and in cityscapes, there are a lot of distracting elements and um, I often want to isolate whatever it is the subject of the photo may be. So in a case like this, I want to isolate that. There's a whole lot of graffiti here, but the vignette really helps you focus in on this guy. The vignette filter gives you the ability to go from a photo like that, which is kind of busier, to this, which is a, quite a bit more isolated and really focuses the viewer's attention. And that's what I like to do with my street photos. So that's why vignette is number five on my list. Okay, we're gonna jump over to number six, and that's on this next tab, and that is called Mystical, and I just adore this filter. It does this wonderful kind of romantic kind of looking glow. You know, you got shadow adjustments you can make here, and in advanced settings, you can smooth it out, add saturation or warmth. I may take the warmth down a little bit here, maybe add a little saturation, and you know, uh, you just get a different look. So let me show you, this is a situation where uh, without and uh, by the way, I kept AI enhance or AI accent technically um, turned on on this photo simply because it brightens it up. But mystical takes you from this where you have a lot of detail, a lot of things going on, and now you don't have as much. So once again, you might want to do the radial mask thing where you come in here and say, well, I don't really want a, a whole lot of mystical on the guy. Maybe I want the mystical kind of in the areas around him. So you might come over here and set that up and apply a radial mask um, and then just increase the amount of mystical and take the shadows down. And it's operating a little bit like a vignette, except that in addition to darkening the edges, it's also kind of softening them up. So mystical does a great job of stuff like that. So there's before, pretty well lit and pretty detailed everywhere. The point is mystical, adds a romantic glow, adds some cool shadow, and 
Although I use Orton a lot as well, if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick Mystical because I find that I use that a little bit more even though there are some similarities. And anyway, that's why Mystical is number six on my list. It's just a fabulous, fabulous tool. Okay, now we're over here on the Pro tab and tool number seven that I use probably more often than others is Advanced Contrast. As you can see here, highlights, midtones, and shadows, you can arrange or uh, impact contrast in each of those zones. So in this one, I might take the highlights contrast kind of high and maybe the midtones contrast kind of high and then maybe uh, take the balance a little bit towards the left. And you can see, let me show you the before and after. There's the before, a little bit flatter in terms of how the photo look. And by the way, I kept AI Enhance or AI Accent on simply because it's brightening the photo. So I just wanted to point that out. If you see that this Essentials tab is highlighted, that's why that's the only thing I've done. It's just to kind of brighten the photo a little bit. But with Advanced Contrast, I'm able to isolate specific sections of the photo and then increase or decrease contrast accordingly. And I think that really makes it pop and in particular, it's really popping around the center of the frame, which is the actual wall of graffiti. So let me show you again the before. There it is before. A little bit flatter in those areas and after. Quite a bit more pop. It's really making the color stand out. And that's one thing contrast does. When you increase contrast in areas, it'll make colors pop. So just be careful and be aware of that as you go through editing. But that's another reason why I like advanced contrast so much. It just gives you that localized contrast adjustment power, which is super impactful on a lot of different kind of photos. That's why this filter or tool number seven. Okay, tool number eight is adjustable gradient. I've loved this uh, slider tool, filter, whatever you want to call it, uh, since it first was out. I think it was in the first version of Luminar. And I just continue to love it. It's powerful. It's an incredibly wonderful tool to have in your tool belt. Um, as you can see here, you can set orientation and you can basically divide top from bottom. So I'm going to move it something like that. You can rotate it and things like that, but um, this is not a deep dive. I may come back and do that. But in doing uh, the separation between top and bottom, then you, you then have these controls. So in this case, note, note that I'm on the top uh, here. I'm going to take the exposure down. I want to darken some of that maybe increase some contrast. You can see how it's darkening those areas. Maybe uh, pull the warmth down and the vibrance down because I don't really care about the color up there kind of being vibrant or popping. And that's maybe a little bit too dark. So let me change the exposure and the contrast a little bit. Um, but then I can go into the bottom and maybe I want to increase the brightness there. Maybe bump up the contrast as well. And you can see how it's isolating that center section of the photo. Uh, maybe I'll take the warmth down to cool it off a little bit and give it a little bit of vibrance. But once again, what I've done is isolated that center section of the photo by dividing it with the set orientation. Um, and then um, if I just turn this off, you can see the before. Once again, I want to point out I have AI Enhance still turned on from that uh, Essentials tab just to brighten the overall photo. But there's before and there's after. And I mean, this is much more dramatic, much more interesting to me. Great color pop and you know, it's just powerful. So I love adjustable gradient. I use it on cityscapes, landscapes. You can use it on a lot of kind of photos. Great, wonderful, powerful, all around, just excellent tool to have. One more time, there's before and there's after. And that's why adjustable gradient is number eight. Okay, filter slash tool number nine is color enhancer, also on the pro tab. and. I love my color. You've seen a lot of my videos. I talk about color. I just, I, I just, I love color. This combination of tools and sliders, filters, whatever you want to call them, super powerful. I need to come back and just do a deep dive on this, but you've got all these incredible controls. And in Luminar 3, a lot of these were separate filters or tools. I like how they combine them in Luminar 4 to put it all together because it really is all these together are color enhancements and they're super powerful. So brilliance and warmth, right? So you can increase or decrease the brilliance, which is a little bit like vibrance um, and it, it'll increase or decrease the intensity of those colors and then warmth, right? Make it warmer or cooler. So just a uh, great power there. Color contrast, you basically just drag this to get the amount of color contrast you want and that corresponds to the hue. So you're creating more contrast as you drag this to the right in whatever hue you're in. So you can see as I roll the uh, hue slider around, I'm creating more contrast in the colors, but it, it works really well on helping you create, um, well, color contrast, which is 
you know, the difference between uh, colors that are opposite of each other. So super powerful. Split color warmth, you drag it to the right to warm those colors up, uh, the warm colors, or left will neutralize the warm colors, and it's opposite for cool. So if I go to the left, it'll increase the coolness of the, the, uh, the cooler colors, and it'll neutralize them if you go to the right. So again, comes in really handy. And then my favorite color balance, you have so many things you can do here. I need to come back and just deep dive on this stuff, but you separate shadows, midtones, and highlights, and then you have all this color control. You can literally just experiment and experiment and come up with a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not gonna get into it here because it deserves its own sort of time in the spotlight, but lots of power, amazing control over color, which honestly, control over color is one of the things I like best about Luminar. That's one of the reasons I use it so much because I love to experiment and control colors. I just think uh, Luminar does it better than any other product out there. And Color Enhancer is the main reason. So that's why that is tool number nine on my list. Okay, and number 10 is split toning. I've talked about this a lot. There's a video I've, uh, I've made recently, a deep dive on split toning. So I'm just gonna touch on it here, the highlights, haha, <laughs> pun intended. You can take highlights or shadows and pick a color for them and a saturation amount. So in this case, uh, in the highlights, maybe I wanna cool them off a little bit, uh, but maybe I wanna cool off the shadows a whole lot to create a little bit cooler overall look to the photo. And you can see I can quickly do that. And actually, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, so here's the before, here's the after. And so you can see it's a cooler overall photo. Maybe I wanna come back to the highlights and make them a little bit warmer, right? And so that might help me pop some of those colors in the center. And there you go, lots of flexibility, lots of power. Again, it comes down to controlling your colors. Split toning is incredibly good at that. And um, that's that's my 10, my friends. Those are the 10 filters slash tools in Luminar 4 that I use more often than others. It's not to say that I don't use the others. I didn't talk about black and white, but if you saw that video, you'll know that I'm having a lot of fun with black and white. I use Detail Enhancer. I love sky replacement, it's awesome. I just don't use it all the time because I'm not replacing skies all the time. I love dramatic, I love matte look, I love color looks or LUTs. Um, lots of different things I love, but these are the 10 that I probably find myself using most often, and that was what this video was about. So thank you for watching, my friends. Please do like, share, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, have a great day, take care, and adios.